Welcome. I'm back. Let's hear if this audio sounding good. Welcome. It sounds great. Uh, it's the radio stream time again. It's WMRV FM radio. It's back and it's coming at ya. Uh, last time I did this was about a month ago, like usual. Didn't go so great. Tried something new. Mixed results, mostly negative results. So this time around, back to normal. Curated playlist, completely, completely thought through and songs that I think are all good. Not just random songs. Uh, and hopefully, you all will enjoy them as well. I should probably do this. Uh, you know. You know how it goes with streams like this. I like to spit silly for a couple minutes before I start. But I always make sure the first few songs are songs that, while I enjoy... You know, if the general public doesn't hear them, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. That said, this first song I have coming up is one of my favorites, but I think I've played it on here a couple of times, so, you know. Not for a while, I'll admit. Probably, probably it's been a year, two years since I played it, but, boy, previous to that, it was pretty often. Uh, I'm, I guess, a little bit of preamble before I get started. I will be gone for next week. I'm going to mention this again at the end of the stream when there are people who are actually watching. But I will be not here streaming in this beautiful streamer's chair uh, next Wednesday or any day of next week because I will be in Canada. That's right. I'm going to that wildfire, baby. Jumping right in. You can't stop me. No, but for real, sucks. I mean, it sucks that there's a wildfire going on at all, but we, I was, my family and I were going on this trip. We were planning on it for a while, and now there's a wildfire going on, and so it might not be even possible. Well, I guess we'll see what happens. But yeah, uh, you know, I've talked enough. Should we get to it? It's been almost three minutes of me just jib-jabbing away like a little jib-jabber a famous quote of mine. Uh, let's fucking start the show, shall we? We got two hours and ten minutes of music to get through, believe it or not. The stream ended up, might end up being longer than that, as it always does. So any VOD viewers out there, shout out to my VOD viewers. If you're a VOD viewer, uh, leave a comment down below. If you're a live viewer, welcome. Uh... What was I about to say? Oh yeah. So this is the first, you know, little chunk of, of songs for this for this for the night. That's three it's three songs. Three beautiful songs. And we're starting off, like I said, with a song that I've played many times. The song is called Artifact, and it is by one of my favorite artists, Surf. S E R P H, not S U R F. Get it right. Uh, I will be, you know, like I said, playing these three songs, then I'll be talking. So, hope you enjoy it. Let's shut the fuck up and listen to music, shall we? Uh, this is Surf with Artifact. Yeah. 
And that was Soichi Terada with Mount Ambient versus Spasm. What kind of dumbass name for a song is that? What up, Leo? Ha, everyone. Just chills and vibes. Uh, for the first chunk of music, yeah. It was uh, a chill start to the stream. Bunch of electronic, ambient, sort of glitchy jungle type of shit. And I love it. How are you doing? Let's start off with number the first song we heard. Number one on the stream, we heard Artifact by Surf. Uh, played him a million times, like I said, you know. Uh, that song was off of, I think, his best album and my album of the year, the year that came out. I think that album came out in 2018. Check out Aerialist by Surf. S-E-R-P-H. Fucking love that album. And I love that song. Not the best song on the album, but one that I think started off the stream just right. Second up, we had Kakyu uh, with the song Textured Clouds. Uh, she is Kakyu, I think that's how you pronounce it, is a Japanese electronic artist. She has been around for a while. I say she's been around. She hasn't been around recently. I don't think she's made anything in the past, like, seven years. But she is an artist that I used to listen to a little bit back in the day, about 10 years ago. Fuck. It's been a long time, even more than that. Uh, but for whatever reason, I just stopped really caring about. But recently I went back, listened to all her stuff, and I was like, this is actually really good. That's why I liked it back then. And I chose this song specifically to sort of represent that. I think it was a nice, chill song. And again, hope you liked it. And last up on that little string, we had Soichi Terada with Mount Ambient versus Spasm. Now, this is a Sumo Jungle is the album it's off of, or, or Far East recording Sumo Jungle Grandeur is the full name of the album. Uh, it's a very YouTube esque album because it's one of those like random Japanese ambient electronic sound uh, records that'll just have like. 20 million views for whatever reason. Uh, and this is one of those. It's real, I think it's great. I mean, there's a reason why it's so popular. It's very good. Uh, but the gamers might know this guy, Soichi Terada, for being a video game composer, most notably for Ape Escape. He did the music for that. Isn't that crazy? So any sort of good music that this guy made goes right into the apes. What does that mean? Who knows? But I said it, and I'm standing by it. Uh, we're coming up. Can you believe it? We're already at the second chain of music. Uh, Leo says, I'm pretty tired. Yesterday was my graduation event, and today I traveled back. God damn. You should be tired. Congrats on graduating. Let's give a round of applause for our good man, Leo. Uh, did you get all A's? Where am I going to have to punish you? Apescape soundtrack is freaking awesome. Yeah, it is. And hey, listen, there's a reason why that this music is so good. It's because he's really good at making it. Uh, I'll let you stew on that question I just asked about. I forget what I asked a second ago. That's how quick. That's how quick the stream goes. I'll literally ask something, and it's just gone from my head. So when you answer my question, I'm just gonna go, "What are you talking about?" And I'm gonna blame you for it. So keep that in mind. Um. Yes, I got, that's right. I got all A's. They gave the cult diploma and stuff. Hell yeah. Congrats. Uh, next time, go for S rank, actually. I think that'd be even cooler. Um, what? I'm going to leave you guys with a question. I took him, by the way, I was surprised me and a couple people got it. Damn. Can I have it? Can you give it to me, actually? Can you mail it to my uh, P.O. Box? 123 P.O. Box Lane. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to leave you guys with a question, and maybe you guys can answer it while the music's playing stew on it for a little bit. Uh, if, uh, if games were real, how would you level up? 
So let's do on that for a bit, this really profound question, and uh, enjoy the first of four songs in this second chunk of music. Uh, it is, the song is Alt Cloud, and the artist is Advantage Lucy. Leo says, I can't give it to you, it's already in my inventory. Well, now I'm going to be playing these songs, and I'm going to be really sad, so I hope you enjoy. Uh, this is Alt Cloud by Advantage Lucy.
that was Aus with Walt. Wow. Whoops. I just, did I not unmute? Whoopsie daisy. Uh, what I was saying was, that was Aus with Walt. And then I said, can you believe it? That was four more songs. And then I cheered like this. Yeah! You probably saw me do that, but you didn't hear me do that. So you know how it goes. Welcome, Linker. Linker says, popping in to say happy radio day. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your pop so far. I know I have. I'm always happy to have you here. Then Leo swooped right on in, not missing a beat, and says, pooping in to say, wah, my diapy is full, wah. So, you know, sort of the yin and the yang of commenters uh, right there. It's a nice dichotomy, pure, you know, pure paragon, and then dark renegade, sort of your uh, moral spectrum there. Um, yeah, those were four songs. How'd you like them? I have to admit, when I made this playlist yesterday, I forgot how sleepy I've been the past few days. I, uh, had one really bad night's sleep like three days ago, and I have not recovered. I've had a bunch of good nights since. I've had a couple really nice naps, but for whatever reason... I'm still tired as fuck. Can you explain that to me? Is there a doctor in here that can tell me what the fuck is happening? Because I'm getting pissed off. Linker says, dichotomy is a great word after some great songs. Love to hear it. See, Linker, that's why you're the paragon. Uh, <laughs> Leo says, I liked them. Advantage Lucy, friend of the show. You gotta respect a viewer, you know? They can't slip anything by you guys. Linker says, sounds like you need some cush. I feel like that, wouldn't that make me sleepier? That would fuck. That would fuck me up. I feel like if I if I smoked right now, I don't even smoke at all. That's also something I should say. But if I did now, I would just like. I think I would go to sleep forever. But the point I was making was, it started off with Advantage Lucy, you know, being a bit louder. It's not like a heavy rock song. It's it's a, but it's a louder, more excited song, and then I would kind of went downhill from there in terms of like very chill, very relaxed songs. Thankfully, the next chunk is, I think, if I'm remembering what songs come next, the next one is way more exciting. Yes, I'm right. The next one is very upbeat. I need some coke, says Leo. See, weed, coke, Paragon, Renegade. Um, so I'm going to wake up from that. And I think the rest of the stream in general, from what I remember, is pretty... Yeah, it's pretty loud, pretty excited. Just had to start with that, uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going out of focus all of a sudden. Had to start with those calm, calm tones. This is also, if it's handy, check Discord. Let me take a look at that. What the fuck? My normal and golden diploma to spite Alex, and he just has a golden diploma. Hold up a sec. Hold up a skosh as some motherfuckers like to say let me do something real quick just take a look at that Is this a nice golden diploma that's fucked up that you just kind of got that that you weren't lying I was hoping you were lying turns out you weren't you were truthing well I'm gonna remove that oh ooh, loud noise Time to get rid of that. Uh, so yeah, let's ignore, you know, our nice, our beautiful viewers' achievements. You know, let's forget about that. Let's disrespect that. Let's make sure that, you know, he's not given any credit where it's due. Uh, because that is an incredible achievement, and I wish it was me. So, uh, <laughs> I'm only lying most of the time, says Leo. I just got to figure out which times, and I'm golden. Much like that diploma. So to start off, we had Advantage Lucy with Alt Cloud. A bit of a different sort of sound from them. More sort of folk rock. Less shoegaze pop than they normally are. I dig that song. 
uh, as I've mentioned before, I think they're a great band, and you know, not much more to say about them than I haven't already. Uh, I guess other than I'm gonna keep, I have a, a a little list of songs of theirs that I love, that I'm just gonna keep putting into these playlists over the course of however long I'm, until I run out. So you know, keep keep looking forward to them. Maybe not immediately in the next time, but you know, pretty frequently. Uh, can, you, can you imagine I was doing this weekly like I was before? What a fucking moron I was doing this every week. Like, yeah, for the first like month, that's fine. But no wonder I stopped for so long. That was that was so fucking hard to do this so often. <laughs> Ugh. Then after that, we had Cross Record with Steady Waves, and uh, Cross Record is a I'm not sure if it's a band or an artist. I think it's just one person. And she fucking rules. She released a couple albums sort of back-to-back, back, like one the year after the other one. And it's this one. This is the album uh, Wabi Sabi, I think is how you pronounce it. And then this, the next one was just self-titled, Cross Record. It's not her first two albums or anything, but those are two most recent ones. And they're two fantastic albums. Unfortunately, she hasn't made anything the past few years, and I'm kind of sad about that because I really enjoyed that record. I think that this one specifically is very Radiohead-esque, and I'm a big fan of Radiohead. So I'm a big fan of this. Then up third, we had Western Skies Motel with Migratory Birds. Bit of like, I'm not really sure how to describe it, like folk ambient? It's acoustic guitar ambient. Just very chill, relaxing music made with acoustic guitars. And so I think there's like one electric guitar in there somewhere. I think it's that shit's beautiful. I think that, that their music is gorgeous. And if you liked what you heard, if, you, if it didn't put you to sleep, check them out. Because Western Skies Motel is incredible. He says, that's what Coke does to you. Yo. Are talking about Coca-Cola? I'll, I'll drink to that. And lastly, we had Aus with Waltz. Uh, did I miss Meek Gazer? No, no, no. Spoilers. But no, you did not. That's not for a little bit. I think probably one, not this next one, but maybe the one after that, I think. So stay tuned. And also, welcome. Uh, this last one was a bit of a more recent addition to my sort of music library. I'm going through a bunch of songs from a specific label on my in my own personal time right now, and this was one of those uh, albums. Uh, this is a song rather off of one of those albums, and I think it's very good. I'm I'm very early on in my listen through, so I'm excited to go through more because from what I can tell, the further along you get in their sort of collection, the better it gets. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, enough of me talking about. Bullshit. We got the next string of music. And guess what? That string of music is, once again, four more songs. Say it with me. Four more songs. I can't hear you. Four more songs. And you know we're starting off with Rye and the song Safe Word. We have to. We just simply have to. So to everyone who just joined, welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for more songs. If there's a single music in that string, I'm going to be pissed off. Low-key underrated bread. You see, y'all are making jokes, but you don't understand. This is about to be music, so take it seriously. Uh, so this is a great song and the start of, I think, a very good chunk of music. And I hope you like it. This is Rye with Safe Word! Thank you. 
you tell me in so many harsh words in your chrysalis I go cause you were right and I know Joy to the world. 僕らはとに正気をなくしてどこからどこまでが。
can make a song for old fools we love. That was Everlasting Love out of the We Love Katamari sound track. So, how did you enjoy it? That was the third little chunk of songs. And I see we got first time chatter. Welcome. Truly Rageous. Thank you so much for joining. They say, wait, did I finally... Find someone streaming mono instead of super ultimate stealth, stealth ninja. Uh, yes, I admittedly haven't tried the other ones in a very, very long time. But I was a man raised on Audio Surf 1, and so when 2 came out and I switched to that, couldn't believe that the default was no longer mono. So I swapped over that, downloaded a mod that made it look like 1, and I never looked back. Uh, I, like, I tried out a couple of the uh, other modes, and none of them just seemed fun. I mean, not they're, they're bad, but just not as fun to me. It's just, it's relaxing, you know? That's a big part of why I, like, I love this game, and why I use this game as the medium to stream the music. It's just very calming, and I enjoy it. Uh, and... Have I used the community mod? Yes. There's actually, that's what I'm doing to uh, string the songs together uh, in a playlist style. Uh, I actually had a very kind soul hop into my stream about a year or so ago and mention it to me. And so I was like, I'll try it out. And then I didn't for like five months until I finally went, fuck it. And then I did do it. And I haven't looked back because it's really great. And it makes the stream more radio-like, where I don't have to stop in between each song. I just play songs like you would on the radio. And then I talk afterwards. It's great. I love it. And yes, the YouTube compatibility is good. I've been considering doing a community-style stream with that. Let me, I'm gonna, let me know what you guys think about this. Now that you mention it, I'm going to drop this on you. In the Discord, I was thinking of making a channel where people could post links to YouTube songs, or not YouTube songs, but songs on YouTube that they like and enjoy, and I would compile them onto a playlist, uh, on, of a YouTube playlist, mind you, and then uh, once I got enough songs, I would do like a secondary radio stream, not one as like hoity-toity as this one, uh, but one where I sort of talk in between each song, I give my reviews what I think. If I like it, what I don't like about them, you know, what I think about the people who submitted them. Do they suck? Do I hate them? Do I hate their guts? Uh, so that's been a thought of mine for a while. Like it, wouldn't, it wouldn't replace this. It would just be its own thing. Mainly because I just want to see how it goes. If it goes poorly, you know, that would be a bummer if that was my one for the month. My, uh, my radio stream for the month. So, yes, that's what I've been thinking. Uh, sounds fun. Sounds cute. All right. Let's, uh, I'll do that after this stream. I'll post it in the Discord officially, and we'll get that started. 
and uh, we can just do, make that a thing where once I get enough songs, like I said, I'll start. I'll do one of those streams. But uh, and since it's not gonna be one of these every sort of every other every other or every month thing, I can just do it whenever. Uh, but yes. So I should also mention. I mentioned at the top of the stream. I'm gonna mention again at the end. But I'm taking next week off for streaming mainly and pretty much exclusively because I'm going on vacation with my family, so I won't be able to stream at all. So keep that in mind. Uh, so let's start with the music, shall we? We first listen to Rye and the song Safe Word. Uh, that singer, his, I don't remember his name, but his voice is beautiful. I love Rye a lot. The first album, I think the first album is Woman is the name of that album. Is gorgeous. I think the f their first album is incredible, and his voice just is magical. That androgynous, dulcet voice, just mm, perfect. And my favorite song of theirs, funny enough, isn't even their song. It's a song they featured on. It's uh, Bonobo's "Break Apart." Listen to that. I played that on here a few times. Check that out if you uh, if you like that this song. Then second up, we had Mew with "Interview the Girls." Uh, as I mentioned before, I've, I did that whole that whole block with them a few months ago. Amigo is my favorite band of all time, so any t chance I get to throw them onto a stream, most likely I will. Interview the Girls is a song that I really enjoy off of their not most recent album, but their second most recent album. It's one that grew on me. I didn't, I never didn't like it, but it never really it didn't really grab me the first like year that I listened to this album but since then it's slowly for whatever reason it just it, it finally clicked for me and it's become one of my favorite songs of theirs in general uh, and then third was Mondo Grosso with Planet Tantra featuring Saito Asuka from Nogizaka 46 uh, great song by a great artist uh, Cole says oh Mondo Grosso you're right. Oh, indeed. I love Mondo Grosso so much. This album, whose name is so obtuse, and I, and I just will never remember it, so I'm not even going to try. It's like Reborn is the first word, and then the rest is who gives a shit. Uh, that whole album is incredible. It's one of my favorite albums ever, period. And this song is off of that. And as I mentioned before, uh, a few times, last year, his album uh, Strange World, I think it's... I'm about to call, about to praise it really highly. I don't remember, remember like what the fuck it's called. I believe it's Strange World, uh, and that was my album of the year last year. Believe it or not, and the same person who sang on this song, featured on this song, was the singer of my favorite song of off of that album as well. Uh, and it's, I need to look up the name of this fucking album. It's killing me that I don't remember. Just like, I'm not confidently remembering it. Like, it's my favorite of the year. I, feel like I do this all the time. Big World. No, I was fucking wrong. It's Big World. That's right. The song is called Stranger. The song that I'm talking about is called Stranger off of Big World. That's why my brain is all fucked up and stupid. Uh, but yeah, if you liked that song, I recommend checking out both this album that it's off of and the newest album as well. I think the newest album isn't as good as this one, uh, which it says a lot because that was my favorite album last year. But yeah, I love that song. And that whole album in general. And Mondo Grosso, something I like about him is that he started off very like R&B and soul in his first few albums, and then he swapped over to like he took like a few years off, and then went full pop. And I think both sides of him are great. And last up, we had Everlasting Love off of the We Love Katamari soundtrack. Now I've made it another personal rule for myself to really not play uh, songs off of. Um, video game soundtracks or soundtracks in general mostly video game soundtracks but we love katamari is one of the greatest games ever made and they just re-released it on switch and pc and i've been playing that and i've been just falling in love with it all over again and the music is just so good and it's influenced my taste so much that i was like fuck it i'm putting the best song on this album on here on, on the whole game on here everlasting love is so fucking good the tracks or, the, or the, the stages that they're on is so good god damn if you've never played we love katamari and you have a switch and or a personal computer to play it on buy it i am not sponsored 
by Nintendo. Clearly, I have not. I'm not even close to being popular enough to get sponsored. That's just how much I love this game. I am freely advertising it. Buy it. It's so fucking good. You will never regret it. Uh, Leo says Mondo Grosso means big world in Italian. That's right. I remember looking that up recently and being like, oh, that's why I called it that. Uh, that's a good name. Mondo Grosso. Please don't cancel me. Nintendo has really lowered their standards for sponsorship. Please buy my, please buy their game. Yeah, they're getting me to do it. They're fucked up. Uh, coming up next in the stream, we got the fourth little chunk of music. This is a really tiny chunk. It's two songs. And it's, this is the Hatsune Miku string. Now, calm down. Come back. Don't leave. This is not what you think. I remember I was playing a couple K-pop songs a few weeks ago, and people were like, oh, how dare you, fuck you, you're stupid. <laughs> it's not true at all. But uh, there was one person, I, f I forget who it was, and if it was you in the chat, I apologize for forgetting who you were, but they were like, oh, man, you may as well play some Hatsune Miku or something. I'm like, well, they it does have, I do like a few Hatsune Miku albums. Now... When people think of that, hear that name, they think J-pop. They think, uh, like, really sort of annoying, honestly. And I kind of agree. I think I don't really enjoy Hatsune Miku in general. Like, the music that, that the program, uh, I forget the name of it, the Vocaloid program makes, typically isn't for me. But these are shoegaze albums that were made with her voice. And I think that works really well. Her super reverby voice sounds great. So, before I talk about it more, let's get into it. We're starting off with uh, the first... There's two songs this time around. If I, re if I recognize them, I'm going to flip off. Don't flip off. The vocal producer are some talented bastards. Yeah, I mean, it takes a lot of work. Um, a lot of effort. I respect it. Uh, especially these songs. Love this album. Oh, this one... Uh, I'm not sure if you recognize this one yet, Cole. This is not... The second one is the one you're thinking of, I think. This first one is off of... The album Stray Light. This is Wintermute with Jupiter Pop. I hope you like it.
that was Flashback 0217 off of the album Meek Gazer Volume 1. Now, who made that song? I couldn't tell you. The name is undecipherable, according to Google Translate. I tried, but, you know, I just couldn't do it. Uh, so, yes, that was two Vocaloid songs. The first was Jupiter Pop by Winter Mute. A bit more uh, standard in terms of, I think, what you typically might get out of her in terms of her, the vocals. But I love that song a lot. Uh, the thing is, I, I don't know. I think, I think her voice with this style of music just works, where it's, like I said, it just naturally reverb anyway. I think that, I don't know, I think that it just makes sense to use this sort of thing for that. It's, it's, it'd be like editing the vocal in post anyway. Uh, the second, I mean, there's not much to say about the first one. It's just, you know, it is what it is. I don't really care that much about that album in general. Uh, the second album is what I care the most about. But uh, I only found the, the first album because that person was one of the artists off of the Meek Gazer uh, Volume 1 compilation. I remember years and years and years ago searching through every single person who made a song off of that and finding, like, two people. Like, they were all still, like, I don't know. It's like they made one song for that al album and then they just didn't exist anymore. Also, their names were, like, it all end in P for producer, I think. And so it's just, like, three or four Japanese characters and then P. And back then I didn't know that that's what P stood for. So I, would, I, it, I don't know. It, it was very hard for me to find that shit back in the day. Uh, Leo says that felt Miko covering... It, that felt like Miku covering indie bands. Yeah, kind of. Especially that first song. Uh, and Cole says they were both still great tracks. I agree. I like them both. Uh, that song, the second song, Flashback 027, or 0217, I'm going to get it right if I'm going to say it at all, uh, is a fantastic song off of a great album. If you enjoyed that, I recommend checking out the Meat Gazer Volume 1 album, and do not investigate Meat Gazer Volume 2. Not worth it, in my opinion. I waited a long time for that to come out, and I remember being very disappointed, so I don't want the same to happen to you. Um, that said, this, is, this song, the Flashback, was, I think, the fifth song on that album, and it's the first five are all incredible, with the fourth song being my favorite out of the entire thing. I was going to play that, but then I was like, it doesn't get my point across just as well. I might do it next, next time I do this stream. I might put that song on here. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm glad, to, I'm glad to finally got out of the way. I, like I said before, someone mentioned it, and I was like, oh, yeah, let me... Let me prove you wrong. Let me show you some good tracks. And then I promptly forgot about it for three or four months. So I'm happy to have remembered it for this time. All right, we're coming up on the fifth string of songs. We got three this time. The standard number, one, two, three songs. And they're all good, in my opinion. Uh, we're starting off with, well, a favorite of mine. The Radio Department. I don't think I played this song before, because I know I did, I did a string of The Radio Department just a couple of streams ago, and I'm 90% sure I didn't choose this song. And if I did, so what? This is the radio. They play the same shit all the time on the radio. That's my excuse. That's my excuse. Okay. This is the first of three. This is The Radio Department with... What will give? And I hope, for God's sakes, you enjoy it. Is it difficult, you two being together? No. 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 That was wonderful. That was marvelous. <laughs>
That was Roxy Music with True to Life. Did you enjoy those tunes? I hope so. Uh, we started off with The Radio Department and What Will Give off of their album Pet Grief. That is, I think, a lovely little song. They typically have a, I mean, this, not that this song isn't, but they typically have a more downbeat, sort of melancholic sound to their music, and this one, I think, is, funny enough, listening to it now, you wouldn't think so, but it's one of their more upbeat songs, I think, one of their more hopeful-sounding songs. I love it. I think, that's, I think that Pet Grief is, like, a perfect album, almost, and I think that's one of the best songs on there. Leo says they were cool tunes. Thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoyed them. And then up next, we had Twin Sister 
with Kimmy in a Rice Field. That's off of uh, the album uh, something. I could find that out real quick if I wanted to, and I do want to, so I will. It's off of the album In Heaven, which is a very good album. Uh, I say that. It's kind of... It's, it's not a very good album. It's a good album. I'll, I'll say that. It's a good album. Solid. Bunch of songs on there that I think are good. A um, couple songs on there I think are great. Um, Twin Sister is, I, I believe, to be a pretty decent band. They have a few albums that I really enjoy, and this being one of them. Check it out if you enjoyed it. If not, well, fuck you. Uh, and last, we had Roxy Music with True to Life. Now, Roxy Music is a brand new addition to the stream. I have never played them before because I hadn't heard of them until recently. They're a pretty well-known band, I think. At least they were back in the day. And this is uh, one of the songs off of their last album. Uh, I think that album is called uh, Avalon. It's very good. I only heard of it because I'm listening to, uh, on Mega64's Patreon, uh, the, the guy himself, Sean Chatfield, has a little series going where he just randomly picks a number between 1 through 500, and he then listens to uh, whatever corresponding number is on Rolling Stone's best 500 albums of the year, or of, of, of all time. He just shoot, listens to that album, and then the next week he reviews it. And so I am listening along with him because as much as I like music, I have a huge gap in my knowledge when it comes to, like, the classics, the well-knowns. For whatever reason, it just never... I just forged my own way through music, and I never really got that sort of education growing up. My parents really didn't listen to that kind of stuff. And even if they did, I probably wouldn't have liked it because I was very much like anti whatever my parents liked in a lot of ways. And uh, so it's been good listening to it. There's a lot of stuff I don't like. I, I mean, like it, I think it's too late for me now to like a lot of the stuff. But my tastes have just diverged from that sort of thing altogether. But Avalon by Rock's Music came up, I li and I listened to it, and I was like, this is, I think it was like episode like six or, or seven or eight or some shit. And it was the first album I liked out of everything. I think he's only on like episode 20 at this point, so he's barely made it very far. But uh, he also then will pair it with the best, the, the 1 through 500 best songs of all time, and he'll trade them off. A few of those I've really liked. But al albums as a whole, I think if there's been, I think, 20 episodes, I've liked five. It hasn't helped that Shit like Elvis is on there. Jerry something. I forget his name. Um, some It's some fucking like old guy who like sexually assaulted a lot of minors. And I'm like, people are like, why is this guy on the list? To like, take him off. I listened to it and it was all the same shit. And I was like, because was, a big complaint I have also is that on that list they have like compilations. Not compilations, uh, anthologies. Which is like, Almost full discographies. Jerry Seinfeld. Almost. Jerry Lewis. That's who it is. Jerry Lewis, I think, is the name. Uh, that guy sucks. Both as a person and as a musician. It's all the same. Sh like It was like t t 30 songs. And I listened to about 10 of them. Like This is all the same fucking songs, so I stopped. So far, the only one I've skipped in as a whole was... I think it was number 99 was the rank it got. It was Taylor Swift's Red... I've heard enough Taylor Swift in my life. I'm good. I'm sure people like it. I'm sure it's fine. I just know already it's not for me. But I listen to, like, uh, Isaac Hayes. I listen to fucking Frank Sinatra was, re was the most recent one. I listen to Prince. I had never really given Prince a chance. And Purple Rain came up. Because I'd, I'd listened to a couple of his songs back in the day, and I fucking hated them. So I never really cared, but then I listened to Purple Rain and I was like, this is really good. I really like, I really liked it. I was surprised. I, I really went in expecting to like, kind of stick my nose up at it and be like, I don't really get what people like Prince. That album was great. Who, who knew? Who knew that this the most famous dude on the planet who has some of the most famous music on the planet makes good music? I'm not looking forward to getting to Bruce Springsteen if that's on there. But yeah, the classics are a huge, huge gap for me. Just like, yeah, okay. Cool, says I never also really got into the classics. Yeah, it's... 
Ugh, who would have thought? Exactly. Um, Leo says, Alex trying to cover up. He paid 40k for the Eras tour. I'm one of those people that wore a diaper to her concert so I couldn't, I wouldn't miss a song. That's I, I, that's something about Twitter that I really hate. Is that on the for you page? I just get a lot of knowledge about shit I don't give a fuck about, like Taylor Swift concerts. Like I don't give a shit, yet I have that information in my brain, and that pisses me off. Uh, but yeah, uh, maybe at, as time goes on, you might see like be like, "Huh, have you guys heard of uh, Michael Jackson? Oh my goodness, have you guys heard of uh, of ACDC? <laughs> I mean, I, I actually know of quite a few Michael Jackson songs, and I, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be cool, so I listened to some of that old rock and roll. So I do know some of that shit. Like ACDC, I, I know, I don't really like... Uh, the only real, that I can think of, the only real, like, oldie rock band that I still really enjoy is Pink Floyd. And that's only, like, a very narrow piece of their discography. Like, Wish You Were Here, The Wall, Animals, Dark Side of the Moon, I think that's it. Uh, Obscured by Clouds is another one. Those five are the five. Before that, two psychedelic, two, like, we're taking mushrooms, man. And then after that, it's too, we're old and we're going, we're doing really cool things. So, who yeah. says, why would you take off your diaper to go to a concert? It's you motherfucker, I don't wear a diaper. I have a tube that goes into my penis and it goes directly into the toilet. You can't see it because it's under the camera. Cole says, my dad really only likes Sid Barrett era Pink Floyd, so I kind of absorbed that opinion. Interesting. That's the uh, really intense psychedelic shit. That's, I like, if I'm going to define the eras, it's the era that I said I like the most, like those five albums, I like those the most. And then under that is the Sid Barrett stuff, and then under that is the most recent stuff. That shit sucks. Like the Sid Barrett stuff is at least interesting, like for the time especially, like they, there was good psychedelic music, but that recent like new wave, new age shit sucks. There's like a couple good songs off of like a bunch of albums. You know which the classic band still owns? The Beach Boys. Beach Boys is good. I like Pet Shop Boys. I guess they're kind of in the same vein. Both have boys in the name. Uh, Leo says, don't look at my penis and my penis tube. Don't look. Stop. My penis. Don't look. Uh, yeah, Beach Boys is great. I actually, Beach Boys was, was on the list of, I listened to, I think it was Honey something. Beach Boys was Honey Mine or some shit. Uh, that was one of the albums I listened to. It was like 25 minutes, really short. Not what I expected. I didn't dislike it, but I wouldn't say I liked it. Just wasn't what I expected. Uh, Cole says, I missed all that because I got 30-second Twitch ads, so I'm going to assume you were like, hell yeah, Beach Boys are perfect. I like, I mean, Pet Sounds, obviously, classic. Hard to dislike it. But, but that one album, Honey Something, it was okay. Speaking of music that I like, uh, you know how, except for the last time I did this, I've been doing a lot of, uh, like, this is a band I like, here is a bunch of songs by them in chronological order. It's happening again, baby. Well, you got to see Pet Sounds live? Who are the Beach Boys? Is that how they fucking sound? They're old now. Uh, this is Fleet Foxes. This is one song off of every Fleet Fox album, plus one from their first EP, and that's the one we're going to start off with. Fleet Fox's Mykonos, and then every song after that will be off of an album. Um, this is going to be a bit of a long... That's why I've been talking sort of so much this time. This is a bit of a long one. This, this is about... I don't want to say the amount of time, but it's a good amount of time. So I hope you guys like Fleet Foxes. You know what classic band Stallone's Beethoven, yo. Yeah. Beethoven's a sick front man. Dude couldn't even hear, and he was banging out the classics. All right, everybody. Uh, this is, gonna, like I said, this is going to be the Fleet Foxes zone. So if you don't like them, you can only apologize. Uh, this is Fleet Foxes with Mykonos. And, well, I'll see you when that's done.
Summer of 
and that was Fleet Foxes with Featherweight. Oof, oh, well, that was a long little chunk. I believe that was about 25 minutes of Fleet Foxes. Hope it wasn't, you know, too much of one thing. Personally, love it. I get a little emotional listening to those songs sometimes. Those are through three of those songs specifically. I, like, always get to me. Always. Um, well, let's talk about them. Uh, well, Cole actually, Cole says, never really gave these guys a chance, but these tracks are pretty fire. Very happy to hear that. I cannot recommend Fleet Foxes enough. It's, they are one of my favorite bands of all time. Their music is so good. I just, I think that they're the kind of band that, even if, maybe it's not for you, if you don't love it, I just can't imagine someone hating it, you know? Like, hating the music for the music's sake. I can, I can see someone, like, maybe associating it with something they don't like, like a person who talks about it a lot or some shit like that. But just listening to the music straight up, I, it's just so pleasant, you know? It's so beautiful. I, I don't know. I love it. Uh, one of the band members early on left and became Father John Misty, who I never really cared for. I kind of wish he stayed in Fleet Foxes, but that said, I mean, they've made some good music without him, so I don't know. Uh, let's start it off. Leo says, Folkiest Chunk. Let's start it off with the first song. First song was Mykonos off of their EP, Sun Giant. This was the first release they ever did was Sun Giant. Really good. I think when you come out with an EP that good, with a song that good on it, like, you're destined to be popular. Like, that song is so fucking good. It came out such a long time ago, too, now. It's crazy to think about. Admittedly, that wasn't... Uh, this wasn't the first thing I heard from them. The first thing I heard from them, I'll get into in the next song, but was their first album. So I didn't really hear the EP for a little while later. But, you know, it's not a staple for me. Uh, Leo, at the time the song was playing, said... BRB going to Mykonos right now. If you have any, if you have Mykonos, just give me a call. I have an ointment that will clear that right up. How dare you speak of Greece this way? Cole says I associated in my head with a bunch of like 2010s indie pop music, you know, like Mumford and Sons, or I guess poppy indie folk. Fair. That's definitely fair. Uh, I, I, they're much more, <laughs> maybe not the right word, much more pure than that. I feel like they, they are like. They're what you would expect really kind of mountain folk to be doing. Like, this is the kind of music you'd expect. Like, I live in fucking... I live in West Virginia. I live in the mountains. I'm a gentle lumberjack, and this is the kind of music I play. It's very, very... Or not... Maybe not... Maybe not uh, West Virginia, but... Docs myself. <laughs> they, they live in, you know... My apartment, which is on 123 Alex Street. I guess more like, probably like the, on the West Coast, like the, the, what's it called? The National Parks, like Yosemite or the mountains over there, the Rocky Mountains. I feel like that's probably more what I'm thinking of, Rocky Mountain shit. But yeah, you kind of get what I mean. Beautiful stuff. And this, the, the second song was Blue Ridge Mountains off of their first album, self-titled Fleet Foxes. Uh, sending a glitter bomb to 123 Alex Street ASAP. No! I uh, I first heard this song when my brother called me into his room. I was in, I think, 10th grade in high school. He called me into his room and he went, Alex, check this out. I just pre-ordered the album this song is off of. And he played me this song. I was like, I was like oh my God, that song is incredible. And so when he finally got it, he actually had to go that day. He couldn't listen to it. So I had a project to do school project and I just this is the only time I've ever done this too this which speaks a lot to how much I love this album I think I listened to this album 15 times in a row on repeat in one day just doing my my project and then just afterward just continuing to listen to it I cannot understate how quickly I latched on to this album it is it is so close to perfect for me. I love it. it, it may, maybe it's because of the first one I heard from them, but it to me is their best one, I think, 
not hands down, but it is solidly my favorite. There's one that comes very close, but doesn't quite get there. I'll get to that in a bit. But that song, Blue Ridge Mountain specifically, has a line, I love you, I love you, oh brother of mine. My, whenever, I, I apologize for singing, I have an awful voice, but I, when my brother and I are listening to that in the car, because we listen to this band a lot together, when that song comes on in the car, and that part kicks in, my brother and I are, are very close, we're very good friends, I love him so much. And we like to joke around. You know, how, you know how I am. You've seen me. You've seen me on stream a million times. You know how I am. That's how I am with my brother as well. But in that moment, in that... <laughs> that Alex was that an angel. Oh, thank you so much. Uh... <laughs> um, when, that, when that song comes on and that part comes on, that is a rare moment of genuine tenderness between us. And uh, it, we both always like like hug each other or like put our arms it's it's just a very clear moment of I love you my brother like I like you are my brother and you are my friend and I will always love you a moment like that and that song always evokes that of me whether or not I'm with him or not uh, because he introduced the song to me he introduced the band to me uh, he is a good friend and brother obviously and then, you know, it's, it, it means a lot. And that song, I mean, by itself, that song is just incredible. Even without that context, I think that song is so good. But especially as I get older, you know, I think age adds emotion to, to things in general. It's just the way life is. As I get older, the, every time I listen to a song, the more it affects me. And y'all are being very nice in the chat, but, you know, it's just, it's, you know, it's the truth. You feel me? You feel me on that, baby? Uh, the third song on the list is... The Shrine slash An Argument. Their longest song, I believe, by far, at eight minutes. Eight minutes, 17 seconds, I think. That is off of their second album, Helpness, Helplessness Blues. When that album first came out, I was like, this is incredible. Not as good as the first one, but an incredible follow-up. I love this album. It's so good. Still the case. I still think that way. But funny enough, that se the second album of theirs is at the bottom of the list for me in terms of where I rank all of their stuff. It has, it's, I think as a whole, it's, it's an incredible album. Listen to it back to front. It's really good. I very, very rarely will listen to an individual song off of this album. It's very rare I do that. Uh, this is the only one, and I only do it sometimes because it's so long, and the back half sort of breaks down so crazily that I have to be in a certain mood to want to listen to it. But I, this is my favorite song off the album, so I felt it was the perfect one to put in here. And I felt it's, it slots perfectly in the middle, where it sort of has that big boom in the middle, and then it sort of degrades into that, like, chaotic sort of cacophony towards the ending. It's not that bad, but, you know, it's, it's way less smooth than the rest of the music. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't want to make it sound like I'm not recommending this album. If you, if you get into Fleet Foxes, if you want to listen to them, you have to listen to this album. It's so good. Uh, but not as good as the third album, which was the fourth song. The fourth song was On Another Ocean, in parentheses, January slash June, and parentheses. Um, the third album is called Crack Up, and that song, when I first heard it, immediately grabbed me. And I love it. That, that is my second favorite of their songs in general. I, that song is so incredibly good. Um... When I first heard that, I was when I first heard this album, I was blown away because I, I just couldn't believe how good it was. It's similar to their first for the first album and their second album, but like it's still its own thing. And I was like, how could how did they do that so well? I again I still love the first album, but this is the album in my mind that comes really, really close to me. It's it's such a good album. I was so impressed listening to it. I love it. I love Crack Up. Uh, but that came out in 2018, so it's been a while. It's been like five, six years now, but, you know, it's not... It doesn't have the exact amount of length that the first or second album has for me. Because those both came out when I was in high school, believe it or not. Fucking Crack Up came out when I was already out of college, when I was a working man. And then uh, coming up and in the rear was Featherweight off of their fourth and so far most recent album, Sure, that came out in 2020, and I actually, 
um, one of my worst, I did one of my worst streams since this album came out where I just played this album straight, and I think I got one viewer that whole stream. So I learned a lesson not to do that again. But I, uh, when I first heard this album, I, album, I first heard this album, I really liked it. I loved it, in fact. I thought it was very good, but it fell short to me of how I thought Fleet Foxes should sound. And it was my least favorite for a while. But then I kept listening to it. I, I, I kept being like, I want to hear that again. And I listened to it over and over and over again. And it grew on me immensely. Now I, I love that album. I think it's a gorgeous album. It's very different from the first ones in a way that I used to think was like upsetting. Like I was like, ah. Now I think it's different in a way that I think was necessary. I think this album is a beautiful, has beautiful sound. And this song, Featherweight, is I think the epitome of that, where it's very... Just, I don't know how to put it. It's it's so soft and floaty, and the whole album's kind of like that, where it's it's less folk rock and more like folk choir almost. It's not exactly the right th word, but it's 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 great, and it it edged above the their second album for me. So it's now my list is their first self titled album, Crack Up, Shore, Helplessness Blues. I recommend listening to them in chronological order if you ever do listen to them, but you know. Do what you got to do. So yeah, that was Fleet Foxes. That was the sixth string of songs. We're at, we're at two more chunks, believe it or not. We have only eight chunks this time around. That said, we are on, on track for being as long as my normal streams. So this seventh and second to last string of songs is four. Four songs, and then... So seven songs total are left. This one is four. The last one has three. Uh, this is a nice little eclectic group of music. I think they all flow well enough together, I think. But uh, they're all wildly different at the same time. You'll see what I mean by that. The chunkiness is real. Leo, you don't know the half of it. Uh, we're starting off... I don't even know what that means. We're starting off with New Jabez and the song Winter Lane. Will you like it? Will you love it? Only one of those two is possible. But... I hope you love it. This is New Job Ace with Winter Lane.
And that was Eve's Tumor with Ebony Eye. So, how was that little chunk for ya? <laughs> uh, Started off with Nuja Bass with, and Winter Lane. Uh, I believe that's a re- Yes, I don't believe I know. That's a remix of a song called Winter Lane. Don't remember who it's by. But this this version is... It may as well be a new song, because it really sounds nothing like the thing it's remixed from. 
I love it. I think it's one of Nuja Bass's best songs in a discography of a lot of good songs. I uh, list, just listened to this on vinyl yesterday for the first time because I, uh, I got this record like a month or so ago and just hadn't done anything with it. So I was like, you know what, fuck it. I popped it on, played some video games, and gave it a listen. Great album. I love this fucking album so much. I love all the stuff. Um, if you've, I'm sure you, if you've been a listener of this stream, you've heard me play him at least once before. He's great. Rest in peace to a real one. Second up, we had Sweet Trip with Disco, or DSCO, off of Velocity Design Comfort, their most, I think, famous and critically acclaimed album. And uh, as Cole says, speaking of the classics, this Sweet Trip song, it's very true. Uh, RP indeed, it's fucked up. It's so sad. It was like, what, like 13 years ago now? It's sad. The last album of his that I don't have, that I want, I, maybe, maybe straight up I don't have straight, is uh, his last, Spiritual State. I really want that, but they haven't released it on vinyl yet. The moment they release that, I'm going to snatch it up as soon as I can. Uh, but Sweet Trip, I'd realized, I played it on the stream a hell of a lot, but I think I'd... I'd mostly played the album uh, You Will Never Know Why on here. And I don't know why, because as much as I love that album, as much as I love the songs in the album, uh, this album that I just played off of, Lost Design Comfort, is one of the best ever. It's, it's, such, it's such a fantastic album, and that's just a fun song on it. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to put slap them on here this time. I need to listen to it more often. In fact, I think the album cover has like some like a building design that is from Montreal and guess where I'm going to be in a week's time baby uh Mo Montreal so respect me uh but yeah I love I love Sweet Trip I love that song but moving on we had Aniotrix Point Never with Long Road Home that was off of his latest album from 2021 I keep forgetting that that album was that recent because I'm like, man, when is he gonna drop a new one? When is he gonna drop a new one? It was only like a couple years ago. I really want a new one though. He's so good. Real name Daniel Lopatin, one of the best, if not the best, electronic musician of all time. He has a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different <laughs> genres under his belt in the electronic sort of umbrella. All of them good. Obviously, his most famous name in that field is on your Point Never, but he's gone by a bunch of different stage names. It's great. I love him. Some of his stuff is really out there, but even that shit, love it so much. I didn't used to. His uh, album Replica was the first thing I ever heard from him. And that is a tough album if you aren't used to experimental shit. Now it's one of my favorite albums, so, you know, I, I, it grew on me. Leo asks, going to visit the Canuck folk? Yeah, I'm going to go save them from the fire. No, we were, uh, my family and I were planning on going to Canada for a while now. But now with the wildfires going on, I don't know what's going to happen. I think we're still going to go. Something is, I don't think it's going to kill us or anything. We're not going to the actual fire. But, you know, the air quality is going to be awful. So I'm sure it's going to be kind of a weird time going to Toronto, going to Montreal. Don't stalk me. Uh, and then last up, oh yeah, there's, yeah, the wildfire, it's, it sucks. I woke up today, and I walked outside, I was like, why is everything so fucked up out here? What's going on? And then I looked it up, and I got to work, I was like, oh. The last song we had on the Suck It Up Like Kirby. Don't, are you talking about my penis? Are you telling my viewers to suck up my penis like Kirby, Samir? Is that what this is? I don't condone that. I don't want... I'm not grooming anybody, okay? <laughs> that's, that's the first way I feel like to get investigated for that. It's saying like I'm not doing it. Uh, if I sucked up the wildfire, what, what, what would my powers be? No, the bad air quality or <laughs> whatever. What, 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 would, what would my power, Kirby powers be if I did that? Would I just be like smog, man? Would I just like be coughing all the time? Asthma boy? Yo, that's, uh, I'm rich. I'm fucking killing it right now. I'm really funny. Uh, last but not least on this little string of songs, we had Eve's Tumor with Ebony Eye. That is my favorite song off of what is so far my album of the year. Uh, again, name is too long and obtuse for me to even pretend to remember, so I'm not even going to try. Just, just look up his, 
his most recent stuff, and you'll find it. Epic Riff. I'm going to find you. I'm going to hurt you. You're going to show me your files. Uh, that's uh, an in-joke between me and rude boy Samir in the chat. Uh, Wildfire Kirby would be OP. Fucked up lungs Kirby, not so much, says Leo. Wildfire Kirby is just that fireball, right? Or I guess, yeah, he, he guess he, that'd be the fireball, but he the fire would spread really easily. Yeah, fucking uh, Iron Lung Kirby. That's pretty cool. But yeah, that YouTuber song is, I think, the most listenable song of this year, in my opinion. I've, I've heard it too many times. That album in general I've listened to on repeat a bunch. Not as much as I mentioned uh, the Flea Foxes one, but a, a lot so far. It would, take a, it would take a really, really good album to come out to, to push that off the album of the year through. I almost said game of the year. I, I don't see it happening. Uh, but we're here, folks. Folks with uh, F O L X, which I don't understand. Can someone explain that to me? Why they changed folk? The folks F O L K S. I I don't. I genuinely don't get that because that's a completely gender neutral word already. But anyway, I'm not here to do my politic stand up about how uh you know. Oh look at all these people. I'm not. I'm not here to do that. What I'm here to do. To play you music. Um, this is the last string of music. This is my shoegaze string. My shoe string of shoegaze. <laughs> uh, we're starting off with Tokyo Shoegazer and the song Open Air. It's maybe their best song. We'll figure that out after the afterwards. But yeah, this is the last chunk of music. When I come back, it'll be obviously talking about the songs and the wind down. We're at the three-hour mark. Let's get into it. This is Tokyo Shoegazer with... Did I forget the fucking name of the song? I did. Oh my god. Guys, what have I done? This is Tokyo Shoegazer with Open Air.
And that was Kinoko Tekoku with Musician. All right. Wow. We did it. That was good. Good long time for music, wasn't it? Why don't we... Let's actually read the chat. Actually, the only one I'm going to read now and not in between when I'm right talking about the songs is, uh, what's up, DJ Tommy Pizza? He asks, which guitar hero is this? Fuck you. I haven't played guitar hero since I was a little baby. Wearing diapers. I hope that answers your question. Welcome. Glad you could join us for the end of the stream. Let's start off by talking about Tokyo Shoegazer and the song Open Air. That is off of their second album, uh, Turnaround, and it's great. I think that album is their best album, personally, and it was for the longest time their last album. I was very sad. I was shocked. I was pissed. And then they came back all of a sudden in 2019. I didn't find out about it until last year. No one told me. No one felt the need to let me know that one of my favorite bands was back. So I'm kind of pissed off about that. Leo says, the dark, twisted guitar hero that fucks. Guitar villain. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It says, just popped in to make you mad. Well, it worked. I'm pissed. And I'm coming for you. Uh, I found Tokyo Shoegazer back in 2013. Uh, off of a sort of compilation tribute album was called Yellow Loveless, which it was a uh, an all-Japanese uh, cover album of the My Bloody Valentine album Loveless. So it was a bunch of rock groups, a bunch of, all from Japan, one, like, doo-wop group, a couple of electronic musicians covering stuff. It's very good. If you, if you like My Bloody Valentine, I recommend checking out Yellow Loveless. I found out a bunch of shit through there, either directly or tangentially. Uh, I f on the album, I found Tokyo Shoegazer, Lemon's Chair, Satispore Record, all bands I'm sure you all are, are household names to you. Uh, and then through that, by, by researching them and finding more about them, I also found bands like uh, Shoujo Skip and My Dead Girlfriend, uh, Mass of the Fermenting Dregs. You know, again, household names that everyone knows. And it really, that just listening to that one album really shaped my music path for... Years and years. DJ Tiny Pizza, you are a little stinker. And don't you ever forget it. P-U. But yeah, I think that's that's the first song off of the album Turnaround, and I think it's so good. Listen to that album if you get the chance. Second up, we had Were with Wavelength, uh, which Linker said, love to vibe to this. And hey, you're not wrong. Now question, did you mean the song specifically or like the style of music or what's up let me know or don't up to you i love this band so much i've played them so many times on this stream uh i love this album cover specific you can't see it i think i can do this i love this album cover specifically this one here because it is just a still from a sex scene in eyes wide shut just they just use a lot of stuff from that, like like sound clips and album covers are all from there. Don't let him know. He already knows too much. Album cover that fucks. It, it is. It really is. Their first album cover is just Nicole Kidman's bare ass from that movie. So you know it's going to be good. They sample a lot of audio from the movie. I just watched that movie again for the first time in a while recently. Still really good. Want to watch it again, even. Fucking love that movie. Uh, but yeah, not much more to say about it. I think it's just a great song from a great album. And then last up, the last song on the stream was Musician by Kinoko Tekoku, which translates to Mushroom Empire. Uh, I love that band. They no longer are active. I think the singer has went solo, while the rest of the band, I think, just probably doesn't do anything like big uh dj Hami pizza says i watched that movie but it didn't look very good just nothing but the inside of my eyeballs no 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 you had to do it bigger you had to make him shut bigger 
Make them shut bigger. Uh, <laughs> I'm exhausted. Everything I'm saying is just coming out as nonsense. Um, this album is the first one I heard from them, and I fell in love immediately. It was the album Eureka. I heard this back in 2012 or 2013, I believe. And I just, ever since then, I, be, I was a huge fan. This album really, really resonated with me. And I don't even think it's my favorite album of theirs anymore, but at the time, I just, you know, just really, really hit me in the right moment. Uh, and this song in particular was a song that made me latch onto this and made me listen to it again and again and again. And now uh, they no longer exist. They broke up in 2019, like I said, and... I'm bummed. They kind of lost their edge in my mind. Their last album I thought was pretty good, but the couple before that were just too safe and poppy for me, so I didn't love them. They were fine, listenable. As a fan of the group, I enjoyed them, but uh, you missed the punctuation. It's actually eyes wide. Shut up. The up is silent. How dare you. I love that movie so much, by the way. I watched it for the first time a few years ago after seeing a bunch of other Kubrick movies as a kid. And I was like, I don't know. I've heard Eyes Wide Shut isn't very good. Because people give that movie a bad rap for some reason. I watched it and I was like, that movie was incredible. So I watched it again in 2020 and I watched it again uh, like a month ago. It's like, it's great. It's so good. Watch it if you haven't. But yeah, anyway. Last words. Kinoko Tenkoku is great. I would recommend them, especially uh, their EP that comes after this. Don't remember the name, so good luck finding it. But it has a bunch of flowers on the cover, so, you know, made it easy for you. Uh, yeah. That is what I would like to call a stream. A beautiful, lovely stream. Viewed by beautiful, lovely people such as yourselves. Uh, yeah, that, like I said, it's going to be my last stream for a little, not a little bit, I'm not, I guess rather, I'm not streaming next week is how I should, I should word that. Most likely, I'd be surprised if I didn't come back the week after that, so expect that. Maybe some Gunpla, maybe some, doing some Witcher again, it's been a little while since I've played that. I'm due for some Witching. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. Uh, like I said, I'm going to meet either tonight or tomorrow. I'm going to open up a Discord channel that you can post songs in that I'm going to put into a playlist. And then once I get enough songs, once I feel like they're, uh, it's, a, it's a good enough amount to do it, I'm going to do a, a viewer-submitted episode of this. Again, not a real episode. It's going to be a lot looser. It's not going to take up the slot that this normally takes up. But yeah, it's going to be one chosen by viewers like you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. I really, truly appreciate it. Three and a half hours of music and of me blabbing on, saying nonsense, and y'all stuck through it. So thank you. If you missed anything and you want to hear it, VOD will be up probably tonight or tomorrow morning, so I'll post that when it's ready. Uh, love you all. Have a great night, and, well, bye. <laughs>